In this video, we are going to take a look at something called Adobe Capture. All right, my name is Matt Kleskowski, and this is continuing on with my series called How to Get the Most from Adobe, where your $9.99 a month Adobe subscription, which gets you Lightroom and Photoshop, we're not going to cover the apps, we're covering all the other stuff that you get as part of the subscription because there's so many other things that you could that you get access to. I think uh, it's important to point them out. If you want to look at the page I'm at, just go to Google and search Adobe Capture. It'll take you right to this page and you can see, you can download, this is an app. I've been flip-flopping the videos. I do something photography related, then I do something a little bit more creative related. And in the last video, I talked more about Lightroom and some AI technology for searching your photos. In this one, we're going to take a look at Capture. Again, you can download the app to your phone via, via iOS or Android. Once you do that, uh, we are going to, and I'm going to switch over into Photoshop because Photoshop is going to come into play here, but let's take a look at the app. Now I'm pointing it at my desk because there's the, the whole point of this app is that you're using the camera on your phone to do things with. That's really the, the whole, the whole thing behind this. So. What we can do, I'm not going to spend much time on the materials one. This is more for 3D objects and creating materials for that object. So uh, for those of you that are into 3D and using 3D, you should uh, understand the concept there. My mind just goes blank when anything comes up with 3D. It's not. A, it's definitely not my world. But uh, if you are into 3D, you can create some fun things inside of there. We'll go to the next one, which is type. And what this will do is help you find a font. All right, so what I'm going to do is, uh, here, let me, I've got this little USB uh, microphone thing that I use. So I'm going to let it find, you can see it found focus right, it found the text on there. So I'm going to tap on that, hit the little checkbox in the bottom middle, and then it's going to come up with Adobe fonts. So these are fonts that you get in Photoshop, all right? Part of your subscription is you get access to Adobe fonts. You've literally got thousands and thousands of free fonts that you get access to. So it's going to come in here and try to find the closest one. Okay. And if you hit save in the top right corner, we'll actually save that font and you'll get access to that font over inside of Photoshop or whatever program that you happen to be using. Moving over to shapes. Let's bring my, uh, let's bring my camera over into this one. So you could do some fun things with this. This is uh, this will capture a shape, All right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to here, let's frame it up like that. I'm going to tap the bottom middle button here. Okay. So it's captured it from here. I can do a couple of things. You could see along the top, it says refine crop and smooth. And along the bottom, I have an eraser tool on the bottom left. I have a brush tool on the, uh, in the middle there. So I can go into the eraser tool and I could erase away parts of this if I don't want it. I could, uh, I could click on, let's just click done there. I could go to the brush tool. I could add things to it if I wanted to as well. I would always recommend try smooth. It does take a little bit of time. So I'll turn smoothing on, but it does take a little bit of time, but it'll go through there and it'll smooth all of your edges, especially if you're creating these shapes and you plan on reusing them on the desktop. Uh, it's, it's worth, it's worth taking a look at the smooth option. The more complex, the object you have, the more time it's going to take. So I'm not really going to wait for this one to, uh, to go through and do its whole thing. I'm actually going to go back and click on cancel, but just to show you, I tapped. If you look in the top right corner, after you capture something, if you look in the top right corner, it says save. Well, you tap save and now that image will get saved to your creative cloud libraries. And I covered creative cloud libraries in a whole separate video. I think they're a really important thing, but your creative cloud libraries is, is reached via the window menu in Photoshop. And there's other apps that support it as well. You go down here to libraries, and then you'll see it saved that shape for me. This, this is one I did before. So now I can just drag that out over my image. And now I have an infinitely resizable vector photo. I can make this thing as big as I ever wanted um, because it is now a vector object inside it. Okay. So that's one way that you could use it in your libraries. Again, there's so many, there's a lot of different places that give you access to your creative cloud library. So it's not necessarily just the Photoshop thing. Okay. Moving on from there, we come over here to colors. So color here, let's point it at my screen. Colors is picking various colors from, from whatever you point this at. 
You could point it at the sky, you could point it at the ground, at a wall, at a person, whatever. And it's creating all these different color harmonies. So I'm just gonna tap it and it's gonna capture that, okay? And then you'll see we can go in here, we can edit these, we can tap in the middle to harmonies. Uh, we can go over here to image and I can move one of these color uh, swatches around if I wanted to. And then I can tap on save. You can see it's gonna save this as color theme two. So, and it's gonna save it to my library, my Creative Cloud library. So uh, you also get the option to publish to color themes, which is color.adobe.com, which has a whole bunch of these things. If you're, um, if you're any, anything in design and you're looking for color themes, it's a good place to go. But let's hit save. So that will save it. And now it will pop up in my color themes inside of my Creative Cloud library. So once I go into Photoshop, you'll see it pops up inside of here. I don't know exactly, oh, there we go. It just took about maybe 10, 15 seconds. So here it is, color theme two. And then what you can do is just hover over one of the colors and then all you do is click on a color. And if you look at my foreground color swatch, which is over here, it's actually changing the foreground color swatch to the color that I click on inside of here. Okay, so I can get access to those colors again in the applications where I might be doing something with them. All right, let's go back over here, looks. So this is, think of this as color grading, all right? Color grading is just a fancy way to say preset. It's just a color stylistic preset. Color grading is just, a, again, a fancy way to say it, but let's go ahead. Like I said before, you could point this at anything. Okay, you could point at anything up in the sky, at a wall, at a texture, at a person, at a dog, doesn't matter. You can point this at anything and then it's going to create a whole series of colors that are looks. So we hit this little checkbox in the bottom and now I can get a feel for what it's gonna look. I can tap and hold to see that's the original photo, that's the new photo. Let's increase the intensity using that slider at the bottom. Again, that's the original and that's with this look applied to it. And then you can see various versions of the looks along the bottom. You can scroll back and forth and it's gonna use the different colors in there as a basis for different looks inside of these photos. Now, all that's good and fine and everything. You can actually even use it on video if you wanted to as well. But all that's good and fine where it becomes useful is if I tap on save, it's gonna create a look. You could see it's called look two and it says LUT, look up table right under it. So I'm gonna tap on save and then we'll jump over into Photoshop. So what it's gonna do is, see that? It created this thing called look two, all right? I created one before called look one. And the way that you, you use this is inside of Photoshop, just right click on it and just choose apply look. It's gonna add an adjustment layer it's a color lookup table adjustment layer. So I've got blend modes, I've got opacity, I can go in here and I can modify it if I needed to, but it's gonna add an adjustment layer to your photo with that look. So you'll always have it in your library. If you find one that you like, you'll always have it in your library, think of it as a preset. That's all it is, just a preset. Is it better or worse than a preset in Lightroom or camera? No. It's, it's just another kind of preset and a different place to apply it. None of them are better or worse. There's no necessary workflow of where you have to add it. If you're in Photoshop and you think this looks cool, go for it, okay? All right, moving on from there, we'll go over here to patterns. You can have infinite amounts of fun. It just creates a seamless pattern for you, okay? So I'm pointing it at my keyboard right now. I'll point it at the computer screen, at the sky. Uh, maybe you can see the little wedge in the middle. It's showing you what it's using here. So, I mean, there's just, I'm going to point it at my camera. Back off, you'll get one version of it. Go in tight, you get a whole different version of it. And again, you can save these over to Photoshop. If you look along the top, you'll notice I'm just running through these things. This is not meant to be an exhaustive uh, tutorial on Adobe Capture. It's just meant to get your, your mind working that this is an option for you and maybe go in and spend some time playing with it. But you've got different options at the top for how you want to save this pattern as well. And then the last one is brushes. So we're gonna pull in a paper towel all crinkled up for this. So you can create your own brushes. So I'm gonna go click tap on that middle bottom button there and it's creating a brush. 
And as you scroll through, you'll see all the different uh, all the different variations of these brushes that it can create. You can go along the top. You can crop it if it's you know it included some of my keyboard. If you didn't want that, there's various settings. If you're familiar with brushes inside of Photoshop at all, some of these settings uh, should be familiar to you. And if not, they're just fun settings to play with. You can even refine it and do different things with it. But here's the one key. I can save these, just be aware. See, see where it says Photoshop and Fresco brushes? Fresco is another Adobe app, it's on the tablet. So these brushes that are below will work in Photoshop, the app, and Fresco, okay? Photoshop on your iPad, Photoshop on your desktop, and the Adobe app Fresco, which is kind of a painting app. So these brushes will work there. There's a whole new set of brushes at the bottom called sketch brushes. Those will only work in Adobe Sketch, which again is another iPad app or another tablet app that allows you to sketch and do different things. So just keep that in mind that if you were to go down to the sketch section, which I did, let's we can jump over to the computer here. If you go down to the sketch section, it saved a brush. You could see it says sketch brush. And it says this brush format is not supported in Photoshop. So I won't be able to use it in Photoshop. However, I'm gonna go in here and save one Let's just save that one. <laughs> Do I want to rate? No, I won't rate right now. So let's just save that one. I think it's going to be called brush three. There you go. Popped up pretty quickly there. So we'll go over and all you do is just double click on it. It'll save, it'll set your brush, your current brush to that brush. And then you can add a new layer and take our brush tool and then just, you know, hit the right or left bracket key. And you can see here, we can start brushing. I don't know that I would actually use that for anything, but again, People that are way more creative than me can find some really interesting things to do as they start to create brushes and textures. Again, maybe go back to that uh, one video on getting the most from Adobe where I show, showed you all these different brushes you can get. Now you're starting to open up to different textures and things that you can go around and take pictures of and use as a brush inside of Photoshop. So hope this gets your creative juices thinking a little bit, moving along and just, you know, something to play with, especially, uh, you know, I'm recording this video in, in uh, mid to late March of 2020, where most of us are uh, stuck inside. So as you're stuck inside, it, it's, it's something to uh, hopefully help keep you busy and have some fun experimenting with.